Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. In my last video, I painted this dresser without sanding. I just wanted to keep it simple. In this video, I wanted to show y'all a few more things that y'all can do to furniture to give it a little bit more character. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of edge distressing along with using some water-based glaze by Rethunk Junk. I'm not going to be replacing the hardware, but instead I'm going to refinish it. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do before I get started is remove all of the hardware. To do the edge distressing, I'm going to be using some 120 grit sandpaper. I'm not a big fan of heavy distressing, so I'm just going to be hitting the edges of this piece and give it a light sanding just so that the edges stand out a little bit. Whenever I'm doing light distressing like this, rather than sanding all the way across the edge, I like to make the distressing a little bit random. I feel like this makes things look more natural rather than it looking like somebody did it on purpose. After I get done with the top, I start working my way down the body of the dresser, working on the drawers, just making sure that I distress everything the same way as I go along. The front edges of this body are actually rounded, which isn't normal. I decided to go ahead and distress this area so that it would match the rest of the body. It just looked plain without it. For the glazing, I'll be using Rethunk Junk's Dark Glaze. This is a similar process to the stain glazing that I use, except that you will need a damp rag. You can see here that the glaze looks like it's gray, but it does dry brown. It's really easy to use. All you need to do is brush it over your paint. Then you'll come back and wipe it off with a damp rag until you get the desired look you were going for. Whenever I go to wipe, I like to make sure that I fold my rag so that it's in the shape of a square. This way it doesn't leave behind any weird textures. you also notice that it gets dirty really fast and you'll need to switch over to clean sides constantly so that you can get a uniform look. Basically, if you keep using the dirty side, you're going to keep smearing the glaze around. If you switch to the clean side, you'll be able to take more off. You can use this to balance out how much glaze you leave behind whenever you're wiping. This is the effect I was going for. I just wanted to have like a streaky look, a little dirty in the edges. Glazing will also help tone down your paint color. So if you feel like your color is a little too bright, you could try adding some glaze to mute it a little bit. Glazing is also going to highlight any damage. So once you apply it and wipe it off, you'll notice that if there's any scratches or nail holes or things like that, those will come out. It's not necessarily a bad thing. In this case, I want this piece to look distressed. So you'll see as I go along, the damage marks will come out and it actually looks pretty good.
For the drawers, I just repeat the same process. I'll work on one to two at a time. After each drawer is done, I'll put it back in the gesture to make sure that the tone is matching the body. So now that the distressing and glazing is done, everything is looking good. It's time to top coat this piece. Just like in the last video, I'm going to be using Rethunk Junk's Tough Top. This is like a water-based polyurethane. It's very durable, easy to apply. In the last video, I used four coats of this to protect the top. Now that I've used it, I feel pretty comfortable that I could get away with two coats. So I only used two coats on this project and it worked out just fine. Anytime you're applying a water-based poly or any sort of top coat, it's always a good idea to step back and take a look at it. You can see here I found some sags happening and I just knocked them out real quick to fix it. Now that the body is done, the last thing for me to do is paint the hardware. For refinishing hardware, I like to use Rust-Oleum's hammered spray paint. kind of gives it a texture whenever it's all done. I'm going to be using black for this so that it matches the gray finish. It actually comes out looking more of like a gray gunmetal tone.
since these little nails are the last things to go in, I'll usually take some spray paint, spray it in a cup, get a little bit on the end of a small paintbrush and just dab it so that it hides the original tone of the metal. So here it is, finally completed. I really like the way that it turned out. You can see how the distressing gives it a little bit more depth. The glazing also allows a lot of the damage and stuff to stand out. It gives it a texture that kind of makes it look older and mutes the original paint color. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this project. I always look forward to reading your comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and share this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. <laughs>